and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Today, IDF soldiers came under fire not far from South Jerusalem. One soldier was lightly wounded by gunfire near the settlement of Ifrat in the Etzion block. Soon after the incident, IDF soldiers were seen combing the area in search of the gunmen. The attack comes just hours after IDF soldiers conducted overnight raids in the area, arresting four men suspected of rioting against civilians and security forces. Border police began evacuating hundreds of protesters from nine buildings in the West Bank settlement of Ofrat today. The Supreme Court had ruled that the nine structures, eight of them homes, were illegal because they were built without permits on private Palestinian land. In preparation for the demolition, the IDF had set up roadblocks around Ofra in order to prevent right-wing activists from arriving at the settlement. Ynet reported that most of the residents of the condemned houses had already left and that those barricading themselves inside and clashing with police were activists. Yesterday, Ofra residents had unsuccessfully appealed the court-ordered demolition in hopes of instead having the nine buildings sealed, making them eligible to be spared under the newly passed regulation law. The law legalizes Jewish homes constructed illegally on Palestinian land if the homeowners can prove that they built their homes in good faith or if they received government assistance. According to a study published by the Israeli rights group Betzelem, close to 60% of Ofra is built on private Palestinian land. Later today, the long-awaited Gaza report will be released and is expected to accuse former IDF Chief of Staff Benny Gantz former Minister of Defense Moshe Ya'alon, and current Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of failing to properly prepare the IDF for the 2014 Gaza War. On Saturday night, Ya'alon took to Facebook to preemptively defend himself from criticism, saying, quote, They'll say that we didn't know, that we didn't tell them, that we didn't report to them, and the biggest lie of all, that we weren't prepared and we lost. That's nonsense, end quote. The report is also expected to find that military preparedness had been hampered by cabinet-level infighting particularly by Yalon and then Economy Minister Naftali Bennett. Top military brass, including Gantz, are expected to be criticized for telling residents that it was safe to go back to their homes near Gaza during a temporary ceasefire, despite the fact that Israeli settlements in the area were still subjected to rocket fire from Hamas. The report will not be released in its entirety, as some sections contain information sensitive to national security. Today, it was revealed that United States President Donald Trump is thinking about nixing the United States' anti-Semitism envoy as part of massive budget cuts. At the same time, the president has proposed increasing military spending by 10%. In order to accommodate this $54 billion increase in defense spending, Trump is also considering canceling special envoys dedicated to dealing with climate change and making inroads within the Muslim community. In the past week, over 200 Jewish graves were vandalized in Philadelphia and St. Louis, and yesterday over 17 Jewish community centers were evacuated because of bomb threats, for the fifth time this year. Congress mandated the position of Special Envoy for Monitoring and Combating Antisemitism in 2004 with the passage of the Global Antisemitism Review Act. The measure directs the State Department to establish a Special Envoy to head the office to monitor and combat antisemitism. Yesterday, the Israeli company Spacecom launched the Amos 7 satellite to replace the Amos 6, which exploded last September. The new satellite successfully moved into its new position and will soon begin servicing the company's customers throughout the Middle East, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Last September, the unmanned SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket exploded at NASA's Cape Canaveral, Florida facility when one of the three tanks containing liquid oxygen ruptured. The Amos 7 is the first addition to Spacecom's fleet since that explosion last September. SpaceX, owned by Israeli entrepreneur Elon Musk, has partnered with Facebook and other companies for several other similar missions in the past as well, though it seems like much of their work is spent forwarding the, quote, ultimate goal of transporting humans to Mars. Among the next step the company is taking to get there is the Dragon 2 rocket's mission around the moon. The mission, which was announced just yesterday on SpaceX's website, is both privately funded and crewed, and will take off sometime next year. Crewed flights to colonize the red planet Mars is scheduled for as soon as 2024. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.